Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about scapular region and especially the muscles and bones. Here we'll discuss scapula in relation with the muscles attached around it. Okay, let's try to see how we go to scapular region layer by layer by dissection. Now, if you look at this, this is how you make incision in the dissection hall. You open the back layers of skin and fascia. Once we remove the skin and fascia, what we see is deep fascia, which is very thick on the back of the neck as well as the back of the thoracic region. Now, once we reflect this, we can see a lot of fibers of muscles which are attached to the undersurface of the deep fascia. So once we clean out all those, what we see is the first layer muscles. In this particular picture, you can see that one side, you will see the first layer muscles. What are the first layer muscles? This is the trapezius muscle and this is the latissimus dorsi. Okay, trapezius. If you see both sides muscles, they are like this, okay, as a trapezoid structure, okay, rhomboid structure. So you will see this is the trapezius. On the other side, it, it has been reflected, okay, to show the second layer muscles. So here you can see this is the trapezius. This is the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus means large. Dorsi means dorsal aspect of your body. So here you can see latissimus dorsi, which is a large muscle, which is going for its insertion to the front of the humerus, okay? So it is coming from back to the front. So now let us see. This is the first layer muscle. And can you see some area over this particular region? You can see there are some muscles which are covering the scapular bone. So immediately we cannot access the scapula because it is covered by the muscles. Which muscles? So here in this second picture, what we do, what did we do? We removed our first layer muscles so that the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi has been removed so that you can see the next layer muscles. Which are the muscles here? You can see some muscles which are coming from the scapula. This is the scapula here. Some muscles which are coming from the scapula to the spine, okay, vertebral spines. And you can see some of the muscles which are on the scapula, okay? So these are all the muscles which are on the scapula and some muscles which are around the scapula, right? So here you can see that the scapula contains muscles which are in three categories. That is extrinsic, intrinsic and rotators. What are extrinsic muscles? Extrinsic are the muscles which are going or coming towards the scapula, okay? Either let's say this is the scapula, some muscles are not within this, they are coming towards the scapula or going away from the scapula. So these are extrinsic muscles. Then some are intrinsic muscles. What are intrinsic muscles? They are present on the surface of the scapula, okay? They are uh, filling the cavities within the scapula. So like subscapular is on the front side, okay? So their back side also, we have some muscles which are filling this fossae, okay? We will talk about these muscles. So these are intrinsic muscles. And some muscles uh, located around the scapular region, which are actually helping to stabilize the scapula, okay, around this glenohumeral joint, okay. What is glenohumeral joint? The shoulder joint. You can see that this is the glenoid cavity and this is the head of the humerus. So when they join together, they form glenohumeral joint or simply called as shoulder joint. So let's see what are the muscles around it later on. But first, let us understand the structures which are around it. Once we know the muscles, just naming the muscles, then it becomes very easier for you to understand the bone scapula, okay? See, this is the trapezius muscle, okay? In this picture, you can see this is again a muscle which is coming closer to the scapula for its attachment, okay? You can see big attachment of trapezius along the spine of the scapula okay all right so uh, trapezius has got lower fibers middle fibers and upper fibers right if we remove this trapezius muscle then immediately we will see some muscles which are extrinsic we talked about it okay what are extrinsic muscles you can see three muscles here one is this is the spine of the scapula above the spine Okay, along the medial border. Medial border means towards the midline. When we have two borders, we always compare medial and lateral. Okay, so if there is no comparison, there is only one term. So when we are saying medial, there should be a lateral border. So medial is the one which is closer to the midline. 
since we have lateral border away from the midline, this is the medial border of the scapula. See, you can see that this is the spine of the scapula. Once again, I'll show you the spine of the scapula. You can look at this bone. This is the spine of the scapula. So this is the medial border of the scapula. So this particular area, you can see this particular area. You can see an attachment of one muscle which is colored here. You can see that this is levator scapulae. Levator means elevate scapula, scapula uh, bone, right? So this muscle, what does it do? Its function itself is named in the muscle. So you can see that the muscle is causing elevation of scapula. So that means actually when we do this, when we call, when we do shrugging of the shoulder, this muscle which is on the back side, it pulls the scapula upwards, okay, right? So even when we are raising our hands above our head, Okay, overhead abduction. Then also levator scapulae pulls the scapula upwards. Then we have some muscles which are along the medial border below the spine. Okay, this is the spine. Below the spine, along the medial border, we have some muscles, okay, which are going to the spine. So what are the muscles? Let us see. Here in this picture, you can see this is a rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major. Okay, these are the rhomboids. These muscles, there are two parts to it. That is rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major, okay, along the medial border. Now, let's see some of the muscles are on the scapula, okay, on the scapula. We are seeing, we are coming from back, okay, approach from the posterior aspect. So, that's why I'm showing you scapula from the back side. So, we have a space above the spine of the scapula. This is the spine, okay. This is the space which is called as supras spinous fossa okay supra above spinous the spine fossa depression so this depression is called as supra spinous fossa and de this depression below the spine is called as infra spinous fossa okay so which muscles are there here you can see supra spinatus and infra spinatus okay isn't it easy if you understand the name it's very easy to understand the name of the muscles as well okay now let's say these are the muscles which are on the scapula. Now some now we are going from medial to lateral side. Okay, we completed muscles which are along the medial border, which are muscles on the scapula. Then we are coming to the muscles which are on the lateral border. Okay, some muscles are attached here as well. So you can see these are the muscles which are attached along the lateral border of the scapula. So to see this more in detail, what we have to do, we have to take off this covering muscle which is covering the shoulder, okay? So here we have shoulder joint. In the shoulder joint, what is cover, covering the shoulder joint? Deltoid, okay? So this is a big muscle which is on the shoulder, which is called as deltoid. So if I remove this deltoid, then it becomes very easier for you to see the muscles which are along the lateral border of the scapula from back side, okay? Now see this picture. I want you to understand how this picture uh, is uh, shown here. So this is a lateral view. That is, arm is abducted, okay? And you are looking from the lateral view along the armpit, okay? So here you can see this is the anterior portion where you are seeing pectoralis major muscle. Now on the back side, you are seeing the back muscles, okay? Which are on the posterior aspect. And can you see this space? This is the armpit. Okay, axilla, we call it as axilla and axillary dissection has been done here. Axillary fat has been removed. So you can see axillary contents. But main important, you have to focus on this particular muscle, which is labeled as B here. Okay, what is this muscle? You Can you see that? There are slip-like muscle. Okay, slip-like fibers. You can see these slips are called as digitations, okay, like fingers, digits. So they are separated into finger-like structures. That's why it is called as digitations. What is this muscle? Serratus anterior, okay? Whenever we say anterior, then there should be posterior. Please remember that. So this is the muscle which is called as serratus anterior. How many digitations are there? Eight digitations are there. They are covering the lateral aspect of the thoracic cavity, okay? The thoracic rib cage, lateral side it is covering, okay? And see, if you see, here is a scapula bone, okay? We can't see the bone here because there are muscles covering the scapula. So you can you see this 
what is happening all this eight digitations of serratus anterior they are going for its insertion along the medial border of the scapula okay so how it is coming this is the scapula all the serratus anterior okay serratus anterior wraps around the thoracic cage rib cage eight digitations and gets inserted along the medial border which side anterior side okay so i'm holding the scapula along the uh, anatomical position you can see that so this is the front side okay this is the back side already back side we have discussed okay now front side you will see along the medial border the serratus anterior eight digitations are getting attached here along this margin okay till the inferior angle of the scapula all right okay so this is one of the muscle on the front side you will see and then you will see a big space here this space is called as subscapular fossa what is subscapular fossa the space which is present inside the scapula okay on the anterior aspect so you will see that this space is filled with scapularis subscapularis muscle okay sub below scapula scapularis okay so that's the name subscapularis muscle all right now we had seen some muscles which are on the back sides which are on the front okay with the dissection pictures as well okay now let's understand some more muscles which are attached to the scapula or in relation with the scapula here you can see that this can you see it is labeled as c okay what is this pectoralis minor okay pectoralis minor c it is taking origin by slips it is by it is taking origin by slips okay from where from the ribs okay you can see this third fourth fifth rib onwards it takes origin and gets insertion into the processes of the scapula so this is a scapula already we had seen that this is the front side and this is the back side now what are the processes processes word means extensions okay there are some forwarded protrusions of the bone right so these are the process you can see two big process okay and slightly tilting for you to see these two processes this is the one which is coming from the back side the spine okay this is called as acromion process and the one which is on the front side this is called as coracoid process okay all right now coracoid process gives attachment for the pectoralis minor okay so you can see that pectoralis minor is coming and getting its insertion to the coracoid process also we have some more muscles you can see that this is the biceps which is a muscle of the arm which is also taking its attachment to the coracoid process all right so these are few muscle attachments muscles which are in relation with the uh, pectoral region and scapula so let us understand the bone scapula itself okay now see these are the muscles just i want you to understand how the muscles are present this is the this colored area here is showing the subscapularis muscle okay rib cage so we can see subscapularis from the front aspect okay only when we remove off all the axillary pad of fat okay then we can easily see which is the posterior wall of axilla okay which is formed by the subscapularis muscle now see here in this particular picture you can see supraspinatus muscle going for its insertion into the head of the humerus so here here there is head and there there are tubercles it goes for its attachment for this tubercles okay this nice attachment of muscles around the humerus in a particular fashion so this is the humerus here you can see there are projections okay all right these are protrusions these are called as tubercles okay so we have a one which is a bigger tubercle here and a smaller one okay this is called as lesser tubercle this is called as greater tubercle and if you see closely there are some impressions you can make out that there are some impressions right this why why does there uh, why we can see an impression on a bone that means there is something attached to there right so we can see this is the front of the humerus we can see lesser tubercle greater tubercle see here there are attachment impressions on the bone so total four muscles are coming from the scapula and getting attached to the head of the humerus along the tubercles okay right so they are forming a 
rotator cuff okay cuff like structure so if you see this is the shoulder joint and you can see that <clears throat> so the muscles are nicely attached around the uh, shoulder in this particular fashion so you can see that this is like a cuff like structure okay cuff so uh, c u f f cuff means what it's like a holding structure okay so just these muscles are holding the shoulder joint and providing support for this shoulder joint why we need so much support for shoulder joint because have you seen this articular surfaces see such a big head is articulating with a small glenoid cavity okay so this will facilitate lot of motility okay that means movement of the shoulder is high okay we can freely move our shoulder in many directions okay but what is happening its stability is weakened how this stability can be strengthened by rotator cuff muscles which are coming from the scapula so when we understand all the structures it becomes very easy to understand the bone okay so now let's see the muscle which is below the spine in this picture you can see supraspinatus is colored and here below the spine infraspinatus has been removed so that in this picture at the last picture you can see infraspinatus is still present okay now below the infraspinatus you have some more muscles okay this is teres minor and teres major these muscles can be mo seen more clearly only when we remove this big muscle what is this muscle latissimus dorsi okay first layer muscles here you can see rhomboidus minor and major muscles along the medial border okay so this is how we can make out in the pictures now see this is the rotator cuff muscle picture you can see supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor which is going from back to front like this okay front side we have lesser tubercle as well lesser tubercle gets its attachment of subscapularis muscle so four muscles form rotator cuff okay nice covering of shoulder joint providing its support from outside so this is how the scapula looks now let us understand scapula bone okay so we already understood what muscles are around it so let's understand in uh, viva usually this is asked okay can you pick this bone what is this bone which side bone it is and keep it in anatomical position so this is the scapula okay and it is how to determine the side of the scapula you have to keep it in such a way that this glenoid cavity this is the glenoid cavity should be facing laterally your arm is on the lateral side right away from the body right so that's why this glenoid cavity should be on the lateral aspect for hanging of this head of the humerus so this forms a shoulder joint so here glenoid cavity should be facing laterally all right and you can see that this is slightly tilted upwards okay glenoid cavity is slightly tilted upwards so that this acromion process and coracoid process are showing upwards okay it can be seen upwards just like this so this is the anatomical position and side determination as well when the glenoid cavity is kept on the lateral aspect now this becomes my right side scapula okay so uh, anatomical position if an examiner is asking you anatomical position always remember that your bones you are showing how the bones are in your body to the examiner all right so let's say examiner is sitting right in front of me and i am showing anatomical position of this bone this is how i hold it in anatomical position and show that this is my right side scapula all right now let's understand what are the borders and surfaces in this picture you can see on the anterior aspect this is the glenoid cavity this is the coracoid process and acromial process okay on the back side you can see spine this is the supraspinous fossa infraspinous fossa all right so what are the borders and surfaces along this this is the superior border lateral border and medial border you can see in this as well this is the superior border this is the medial border and this is the lateral border glenoid cavity along the glenoid cavity we have lateral border and this is the anterior surface posterior surface anterior surface is called as subscapular fossa 
and posterior surface is divided into two parts by the spine of the scapula, okay? You can see the spine of the scapula. And here, this space is called as supraspinous fossa and this is called as infraspinous. Infra means below. So, this is supra means above. Above the spine, this is called as supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa, okay? Now, can you see when I turn like this, there is something called, something here, there is a notch-like structure, okay? There is not a notch-like gap between the spine and the glenoid cavity, okay? This is called as spinoglenoid notch, okay? Between the spine and the glenoid cavity, you can see a gap here. So, this is called as spinoglenoid notch. That means some structures, vessels, nerves, they can easily pass through this. Okay, can you see that? From above to down, it can pass and supply this infraspinous fossa. Okay, right? This is called as supraglenoid notch. Now, let's take a closer look at this part. Okay, anterior side, you can see another small notch. Okay. This is called as supraspinous fossa. Sorry, uh, this is close to this superior border, and here along the su uh, this superior border again we will see a notch here. Okay, here also some of the smallest blood vessels and nerves are actually passing. So I could not recollect that name. So you please go back and just give one a reading about this particular um, small notch. Okay. Yeah, so here you can see that the in this picture you can see the attachment subscapularis. Uh, here you can see nicely the attachment of serratus anterior along the medial border. And here you can see there are projections just below the glenoid cavity. You can see small tubercle here that is for the long head of the triceps. Okay, triceps is a muscle of the arm. So here you can see this is the coracoid process. On coracoid process, you can see pectoralis minor muscle, which we already had seen, coracobrachialis muscle and short head of biceps. Coracobrachialis and short head of the biceps are the muscles of the arm. Okay, These muscles are going into the arm. Pectoralis minor is a muscle of the pectoral region. All right. Now on the back side, we have supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Okay, And along the medial border, you can see levator scapulae, rhomboidus minor, and rhomboidus major attachments. Okay. Whereas along the lateral border, you can see, see, there are this, you know, strip of muscle attachments. Long head of the triceps. Okay. Below that, teres minor and teres major. Lastly, at the angle, this is the angle of the scapula. There, we get attachment of latissimus dorsum. Okay. I hope you understood this, right? So uh, with this, just let us revise quickly what scapula is. Scapula has got two surfaces, okay? Anterior and posterior. Posterior surface uh, is again divided by the spine into supraspinous and infraspinous fossa, okay? And here we have spine. Along the spine, don't forget the spine is also a greater place for attachment of muscles, which we could not, uh, you know, uh, completed before. So here you can see along the upper border of this crest, this this sharp area along the spine, this is called as crest of spine. Okay. Along this crest of the spine, we have attachment of trapezius muscle. Okay. We have this big trapezius muscle on the back side, right? So trapezius is attached. Along the lower border and along the acromion process, we have attachment of deltoid muscle okay we'll just go back try to show you that picture so you can see <clears throat> this is a deltoid muscle okay deltoid the shoulder muscle so we have deltoid posterior fibers and lateral fibers attached along the acromion process okay now along uh, we have two joints as well here at this point we have attachment uh, articulation of the clavicle forming acromioclavicular joint. All right, acromioclavicular joint. Okay, so what are the joints formed by scapula? One glenohumeral joint and another acromioclavicular joint. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know.
and uh, please try to uh, see uh, whatever we have done and if i could not uh, deal with any of the points here you can just let me know and uh, please try to add some more information into it okay thank okay. you uh, basically this videos are for uh, your understanding i'm mm, i'm trying to give simple information so that students who feel difficulty in understanding uh, bones uh, muscles okay all together uh, for them these videos are made in a simpler language so that they can easily understand and if you still feel that it is difficult for you to understand certain concepts please do let me know in comment section and we will try to add uh, whatever your questions are okay with this thank you so much for showing so much of love